beef plate ribs today. Got them trimmed. Took the fat cap off. Did that yesterday and they've been in the fridge drying, open air. So figured um, I'm doing one a little bit differently than the other. One, I'm just taking right through straight up 202, 204, whatever, you know, until it's tender. The other one, I'm gonna do a little bit less. Just gonna build a nice bark on it, get some flavor in it, all that other good stuff. And um, my wife wants me to do, uh, do a braised short rib type thing. So that's what I'm gonna do with the other one. But I figured that would be a good chance to, I uh, figured why not do dual of the gravities out there? See how it works on uh, um, bark, you know, things like that. So, so both be at least taken to that point, you know what I mean? So let's get busy. Look at that. Membranes left on, everything all set. I ain't even gonna bother seizing the other side because there's nothing going through that membrane anyway. We have a big old batch of uh, meat meth here, a uh, rustic version of it. And I'm going to just hit these guys liberally first, so I have no binder, and then I'm going to rub it in. So I just wanna make sure I have good coat. Sweat them for a little while while I'm heating up all the, the grills out there. We'll rub them in and see what they look like. I'll get the sides, you know, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna keep them just like that for right now. Let them sweat in a little bit while they warm up and uh, get all the grills lit and they should be good to go. We'll be back. All right guys, so we can get these guys lit. Um, like I said, I figured uh, since I'm am doing two racks, uh, one I'm actually gonna be um, using for braising. Uh, my wife wants something a uh, little bit different off one of them. The other one I'm just gonna be going just straight up, you know. So I figured, why not have uh, uh, a battle of the gravities, I guess. So I'll toss a rack on the uh, master belt and I'll toss a rack on the uh, the old country out here. So um, we know all that thing lights, lights quick. This guy's gonna take about 35 minutes or so. So um, let's get him lit. We got our, uh, our guy open here. I emptied out the ash. Rattled my uh, my rack here. Made sure all that stuff dropped in before I emptied it. Stuff these guys in there. Some tumbleweed. Crack our top open. and let the persuader do its job. All right, so I'm gonna let him go and uh, keep that flow going. We got about, uh, I don't know, just under a half, a half a chamber in there. Honestly, that should actually do it. Um, this one, I, uh, on that last cook, because I'm not used to it, I forgot to put the snuff blades back in. So all I did was just shut it off and I walked away and went about my business. So in case you were wondering, that's what happened. <laughs> so it burnt, it burnt all of it, man. So that's all right. So today would be my, uh, uh, my foray into the lump on this thing. So um, while we're right here, I'm just gonna get this guy ready, get it ready to light. And um, I'm actually getting a, a tree cut down today here too. Um, and I believe he is here. So I need to do this quickly. So we're just going to, uh, oh, oh man. That beautiful Missouri weather. We go with our, uh, our lump here. guy up down here just to uh oh man sticky icky man look at that shit what the fuck? 
Anyway, let's knock that ash down. Just like so. Make sure all that stuff gets down there and lock her up, man. So I'm gonna empty my ash bin down here and uh, get some tumbleweeds in there and that thing will be ready to light when it's time to go, so. All right, we'll be back. All right, guys, uh, get a little tied up with the tree guy, but they made quick work of that, man. Awesome. Anyway, um, she's about ready. Got the water pan in it, hot water, of course. And um, just uh, didn't realize how low I was on coal. So I figured I'm gonna give this a shot. And I just tossed a full split right down into the chute up there. So once it catches, it should burn like that. You know what I mean? So I'm just gonna see how it rolls. I will keep an eye on it. I am gonna go out this morning and uh, restock on my coal. But um, I figured why the hell not, you know? Um, if I can uh, treat it kind of like a, a standard fire pit like I used to, uh, to where I could maybe just, uh, you know, get my coal bed going down there, toss in a couple of uh, splits, I don't know. So we're going to see. I know it's a little bit risky to try it on, uh, on uh, an actual cook, but whatever. It is what it is, man. It, you know, it makes sense. You know, I mean, the bottom of the log is going to light. And, um, you know, it should, it should burn upwards, right? Gravity, you know, I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, um, that's what I got going on in there. In here, we just got coal and I'm going to throw a half split of oak down there. Uh, both oak, by the way. All right. So let's take out the snuff blades. One guy did point out these little hooks right here. You can actually... hang them on these side things over here. So rock on, buddy. So I got my, uh, I got my um, tumbleweeds in there, sorry. I will say these rubber gaskets are complete shit. Um, they stick. As I was opening this thing out, I was literally peeling it off and I had to actually push this entire rubber gasket back into place. So, um, and it did even, eh, maybe not. I don't know. They're just garbage. As you can see, they're even stuck over here. Um, you know, to the actual shoot themselves. So, whatever. It is what it is, I guess. Let's let her up. All right, so we got our weeds lit and we're gonna go over here. I'm gonna fire this guy up. Going 275 on both of these. Got a water pan in here as well. And let me just make sure these weeds are burning. All right, should be good. And we have fan. So um, just a quick sh set up here. I flip the grates back around to smoke. As you can see, my fan's not shutting off anymore. <laughs> but, um, and I got a water pan in there. So I'll just throw them on this side. So. All right, I'm gonna let that get lit up and uh, let it snap even out. This guy's got about 10 more degrees, just about. And uh, let's get our ribs on it. All right. Five minutes, man. She's at, uh, eh, come on, 280. So, fans are shut off. She's toning back down now. Let's put our split in. Gonna toss this guy right in there, like so. We 
gonna give that about five minutes just to uh, just to catch, start rolling. We're already rolling the uh, the lump oak in there anyway. So um, let's get our meat, get it on. All right, guys. So we got this guy here smoking nicely. The old C back here is smoking nicely. We got a 275 and we got waiting for it to rotate, sorry. 279. So she's still cooling down. Fan hasn't kicked back on. So she got there. She got there quick. And Fisher Price says we are smoking. So that's law, man. That's law. All right. Let's get this guy set up. First off, we're going to, uh, I'll be using my meter on this. On the uh, gravity, I'm actually going to be using, uh, we're going Wi-Fi. On the gravity, I'm going to be using the built-in probe, just, you know, just because. I figured I'd give it a shot, see how it is. Oh, man, that smoke smells good. I love the smell of burning oak, man. Shit's cologne, man. So my, my wife married me, you know. All right, let's do this. Smoking beautifully. Bring these guys right over here. See ya. All right, next. This guy here. Oh man, you know what I'm not used to? Sticking the probe in first. God damn it. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if these uh, tips can make it through these little probe ports. One second, let me check this out before I do this. Oh yeah, we're good, we're good. All right, I'm not used to that. All right, so, get in here. Yeah, you just gotta persuade it a little bit. I'll go into, I'm assuming the top is probe one. I don't know, it doesn't say. And put these guys just like so. All right. So there we got her. Hold on a minute. Get in there. All right. So um, just waiting for this to rotate here. Still reading 274 as four on that ambient probe and 46 on the meat. Um, for my meter, I'm on, I'm not, I didn't use standalone, so I actually have to look through it in my app. Um, standalone will actually tell you all the data on the outer display, but um, when I'm using that, I just prefer to use the app. The app is actually awesome on that thing, it's a great app. But um, other than that, that's it. I'm gonna let them go. Um, like I said, this one here, I'm not going to take to the 200 because uh, my wife wants uh, something special. So they want to, she wants me to do some brazing and stuff like that with those. So I'm actually going to take those until I get a nice smoke, a nice bark. Typically, you know, the 165, something like that. You know, it's usually around that mark. And that's when, uh, you know, like a brisket will stall or most meat actually. So, so I'm going to take those to that. And um, so I'm not going to really be able to compare uh moisture and tenderness with this one um i'm just more so comparing the the smoking part of it you know how, how how's that thing build bark um you know how well it does maintaining its temperatures um just that kind of stuff you know what i mean um it's not really going to be a final product type thing this thing i i know what it does so um uh i'm not going to touch it i will pull it i'm not wrapping anything um uh, I just debating on wrapping, you know, being plate ribs when you wrap them, you know, with a little moisture in there, you know, they're, they're almost brazing like that in there. But, um, I think I've come to the conclusion. I just, I'm not going to, I just want to see, um, see how it turns it out. I mean, I got my water pan in there. There's a ton of moisture in the, in the chamber itself. Um, I don't know. I may change my mind. It just depends. I'll take a quick look at the same time I pull these guys off and I'll make my decision there. Um, if I got a beautiful color and a beautiful bark, maybe I'll just go ahead and wrap them and uh, just keep it business as usual. You know what I mean? Um, or maybe I won't. I don't know. 
I'll make that call when it's uh, when it's time to make it, I guess. But uh, other than that, let's see how they roll. So um, we got oak in both of them. And like I said, I got that whole split in here. So I'm curious to see how that goes. Um, we recovered real quickly. She's back at 275 right now. So what that's telling me is I'm going to need to tone my ball valve down just a little bit because if it recovered that quickly um, after opening that massive door, um, she's coming to temp quick. So it'll definitely overshoot my 275. So I will, I'll probably tone that back, you know, around uh, three quarters, monitor my temps, see if I'm going up, see if I'm going down. Um, you know, so within the next 10, 15 minutes is where I like to watch my temperatures, just so I know. Now it'll come to the point where I get to use this thing more. I'll know exactly where it's gotta be. But for right now, I'm trying to um, uh, get an idea on that ball valve. I know it's super responsive, um, but you know, sometimes, uh, you know, the, you know, what you're burning in there makes a difference. That oak log that I tossed in there, I'm sure is going to make a difference. Um, it's going to, uh, it's definitely going to burn hotter than that lump, I would assume. But, um, other than that, that's it. So I'm just going to let these two, uh, share this beautiful smell with the rest of the neighborhood and, uh, make everybody jealous over here in Wentzville. And, uh, that's it. I'll be back. Okay. So just a quick shot of the apps here. Here's our meter. Um, like I said, we're getting right back up to temp. She's recovering quickly. We got an internal of 51 and I have our target set. Um, that's the other probes down here is our graph. Um, as you can see where the, uh, that top green line is the pit temp and, uh, that lower purplish line is the, uh, plates themselves. So, and you know, you got your cook duration and all that other good stuff. So then we go to the master built app and we are holding at the 278 right there. It shows you our target. You flip over and our plates are at 53 degrees. So we've got a four, four degrees difference in our, um, our plates. But um, I will say about the master built is the, the probe is damn long, man. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculously long. So trying to get it into a, uh, you know, uh, the right spot, you know, it might not be quite there. So the uh, internal temp might be a little bit off, but either way, it doesn't really matter. But other than that, that's it. There's the two apps, um, and should be leveling out. We got a nice climb on our temp. I already dialed the ball valve down just a little bit, so it should slow down dramatically, and um, uh, I'll lock her in at 275. So they both should be rolling the same, both with the mo with the uh, water pan, and actually our internal now is reading 53. So we're, we're pretty much right on par, uh, both devices, actually, so... Let's see how she works, man. All right, guys, so I'm not even sure how, but both of the racks on each one of the pits, they're both still holding that 275, but both of the racks are showing 200 degrees right now. They are even on their temperature cooks right now, which is, I don't know, pretty surprising to me. Uh, two different racks on two different pits finishing at the exact same time man it's insane so we're gonna uh we're gonna poke at them let's see what kind of tenders we got and uh we'll use the uh insta read see what we got going on so let's uh let's do this guy here real quick see what's popping here oh man oh man baby look at that look at that Let's see here. What do we got? Ho oh, ho. You see that? That's butter. And she's reading 200 just like the other one. And we are talking. Oh, hell yeah. It's temping the same all over the place, man. All right. Well, we know that's good. Close him up for right now. Let's go see the other one. Crazy, crazy. Finish at the same time, man. They both look fantastic. This one, oh no, she's got her now. This one was looking a little more dry earlier. I mean, um, on the live feed, as we were checking it out, uh, she's butter too. And she's she's probing everywhere, right in the twos, man. That's exactly what we want right there, guys. That is perfect. 
absolutely perfect. So, all right, I'm gonna go grab a tray. Uh, let's pull these guys off. And uh, I'm just gonna just put them both on a tray. I'm gonna cover them with some foil and I'm just gonna toss them in the oven off. You know, just, uh, um, I like the oven. Oven is, keeps drafts down, it's insulated, but yet it's not so tight that it'll steam the meat inside there like a cooler will, you know? I mean, you could crack your things on a cooler, you know, crack the drain, whatever, pop the lid, burp the lid every once in a while, but I'm not gonna go in the garage and dig out my cooler. So I'm just gonna throw them in the oven and uh, with the oven off, and just let them just chill, let them rest, good 45, maybe an hour. So let me grab the pan. So let's get them off the master build first. I'm still blown that uh, they both finished at the exact same time, man, that's crazy. So this guy, we just shut it off. Take your little snuff blades here. Fat one on the bottom? Nope. Fat one on the top. Thin one on the bottom. That's it. So, that's all we gotta do. Let me grab my gloves. No shutdown. No nothing. Snuff it out. I like that. I'm seriously impressed. I, I can't get over the fact that they both finished at the same time. Water was definitely evaporating. That's all we got left. I only did a half a pan since it wasn't, you know, I knew it was going to be too long of a cook. Let me grab these guys off without destroying them. Check them out, man. Come on. Look at that beautiful bark on there. Nice color. Look at that. That's a good looking rack, man. I'm just gonna pull our probes out. No reason to keep them in there. All right. Let's go get the second one. Put him up here. That's a pretty rack too, guys. Holy shit. Check that out. Man. Look at that. Ooh, ooh they smell fantastic. All right. And again, this one, very little left in that guy. She's almost gone. All right, so shut her down, close the cap. Shut the valve, that's it, it's done so. So, all right, like I said, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just gonna cover these guys with some towel. Let me pull my, uh, my meter out and clean him up. Look at that, look at those things, man. They both look fantastic. I mean, honestly, you wouldn't even be able to tell. This one's a little bit lighter. <clears throat> but other than that, they both look killer, man. Killer. They smell awesome. So, all right. Like I said, I'm just going to tent them in some foil, toss them in the oven, just let them rest, man. All right, guys. It's been about an hour. They've been resting, tenting. Let's see what we made. It's like that. All right, so, oh, damn, I can't remember which is which now. Um, this is the old country, I think, because of this snaggle tooth, if I remember correctly. I don't know. Either way, let's see what we got going on, shall we? Look at that. Man, that's a good looking rib. And, should be cut here. 
try to keep them even, you know what I'm saying? I wanna cut, uh, cut one that's around the same height, same thickness, it's close enough. Look at that. Man. So there they are. This is the old country. This is the uh, master belt. Both are mighty fine looking ribs. Let's see. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna dig into these things. I'm just going in hot, man. I didn't even need to chew that. That is, um, ooh, man. I stepped it up on the uh, meat mess today. She's got a little fire behind her. Man, that's good though. Damn, damn, damn. Again, it's a good looking rib, man. Let's go in. Alexa, stop. You know, it's pretty hard to tell. There's definitely a little more moisture in the one from the old country. But I got, like I said before, I kind of anticipated that. Just about how the chamber holds the moisture in the first place. You know what I'm saying? But they are both, oh man, excellent ribs. So uh, the master belt can definitely throw down. It's, uh, it's that simple. So, all right guys, other than that, that's all I got.